Alright, we're up to question number 19 right now. Uh, there's quite a lot of background noise, a lot of students in the background, please excuse that. Alright, number 19, we do have a right triangle over here. Uh, besides the fact that it states a right triangle right here in the question, uh, you can also tell by this sign over here, this little box, it tells you the right triangle and also that means that angle is 90 degrees. Okay, the question is what is the ratio represents the sine of angle U? Okay, sine of angle U. So this is angle U over here, okay, this little angle over here. Uh, before we begin, we need to actually identify the size of the triangle. So if this is angle U, the longest side of the triangle, it's always hypotenuse. So you might want to put a little note here, the side hypotenuse. The angle opposite of angle U, or furthest away, it's the opposite side. And the side next to angle U, that's touching angle U, but it's not the hypotenuse, that is the adjacent side. Okay, so those are the three sides, and we're looking for sine. And uh, if you actually memorize uh, sine or look in the Regents uh, uh, formula sheet, they can tell you that sine right, is equal to opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay. Well, if you remember Sokotoa, right, sign is Sok, S-O-H, right, and that means S is sign, O is opposite, and H is hypotenuse. So we're just going to fill it in here. So using the formula, uh, we're going to put sign of angle U, sign of U is equal to, right, and we have opposite, which is 15 divided by hypotenuse, which is 17. Okay. And that is the ratio for sine of angle U. And that will be choice two. All right, let's move on to the next question, number 20. Okay, number 20, we have a radical here, right? Square root of 72. And the question is, how do you express it in the simplest radical form? Um, the easiest way to uh, show you guys and what I teach to the kids is that I'm going to break this down into prime factors, okay? So I usually branch out in a little uh, two arrows here and do the factor tree. Uh, look for two numbers that multiply to give 72, right? It could be 9 and 8, right? It could be other numbers, but I'm going to break it down. So 9 times 8 gives you 72. Let's break down 9. 9 is uh, two numbers that multiply to get 9, 3 and 3, and two numbers that multiply to get 8, that is 4 times 2, right? And we can't break down 3 anymore, so I'm just going to carry it down. With four, I can still break it down a little bit more. Two times two gives you four and bring down the other two. So we have three times three times two times two times two, right? And if you multiply this out, really this gives you 72. So I'm not really changing anything. This over here right, is the same as the square root of 72. Okay, and here's the trick. Um, for square roots, because we're looking for square roots over here, for every two number that are the same inside the radical that's underneath, you can cross both of them out to take one out. For example, three and three, they're both the same. So I'm going to circle these two, slash them out, and bring one out, the three out. Uh, there's also two twos over here, so I'm going to cross out two to bring one out. Those two, okay? And the last two inside, we can't take it out because there's no other pairs and there's no other twos to cross out with. So we'll leave that the same. Okay, whatever you've taken out, the two and the three that you've taken out, you're gonna multiply these. Whatever you take out, you multiply. And you get six radical, and what's left over is two. And that is your answer, and that'll be choice three. Choice three. Okay, let's move on. Number 21. Here we go, it says, what is 6 over 5x minus 2 over 3x in simplest form? Alright, so in order to do this, let's write it out here. 6 over 5x minus 2 over 3x. Uh, before we subtract, we need to get a common denominator. That means uh, 
the bottom numbers over here, 5x and 3x, uh, we need to find the same number on the denominator, same on the bottom. Okay, so think about common factors between 5 and 3. Right, what number can be divided by 5 and 3? Okay, we thought about it, there's a lot of numbers over here. But the smallest or lowest common denominator would be 15. So, right, between 5 and 3, 15 is the smallest number that can be divided by 5 and 3. And because they both share an x, the lowest common denominator would be 15x. So what you want to do is you actually want to convert and see how you can get from 5x into 15x. Well, I can multiply 5x by 3 and I'll get 15x. But whatever I multiply the bottom by, I also need to multiply the top by. So 3 over 3, and 3 times 6 is 18. Right, again, I apologize for the noise in the background. It was kind of loud. Also over here, I need to find two numbers All right, on this side. I need to find numbers that multiply 3x to get 15x. Well, 3 times 5 will give me 15. All right, and we have 5 over 5. I need to multiply the top by the same number. And 2 times 5 will give me 10. Okay? So now I made the conversion. Both fractions have 15x on the bottom. And we just need to subtract the top or numerator. 18 minus 10, that's 8. And the denominator stays the same with 15x. And that should be our solution. And that is choice we two over here. And that's it. All right, number 22. All right, 22 is a tough one, okay? There's quite a few ways of doing it. Uh, you can do it by substitution, and you can solve it graphically. And I'll show you how to solve it graphically very quickly. I'll bring up the calculator over here. Uh, first you need to do is actually graph two equations on the cap calculator. So plot the points, we have x squared minus x it's 20 and we are going to put the second line over there which is 3x minus 15 okay let me just zoom out a little bit All right, and you can see it's a, uh, it's a parabola with uh, a line going through, and it does meet in two points. The line and the parabola do, does connect in two points. I'm trying to get a good picture here. There we go. Very nice. All right, once you have the, uh, on the graph encounter, once you graph it out, parabola and the line going through, uh, you can then click on calculate over here, second. Trace. Then go down to intersect. Because right, pretty much the solutions is where the line and the parabola connects. So as you can move left and right, you can see my cursor over here. Left and right. And we just move it close to one section right there. That's where it intersects. Press enter three times. One, two, three. And intersection is 5, x equals 5, you can see right here, x equals 5, and y equals 0 on the bottom of the screen, so a one coordinate is 5 comma 0, okay, that's one answer. Right, another answer is, and if you go back to the, to the uh, calculator over here, you can go second, calc again. Alright, and go down to intersect, and you'll move the cursor all the way to the left side where the left intersection is between the line and the parabola. Press enter three times, and it's telling you x equals negative 1, y equals negative 18, and that is the other solution. So there's two solutions to this question, negative 
1 and negative 18, also 5, 0. So, let's take a look at the different choices here and see which one has it. We do have choice 2, negative 1, negative 18, and that is the answer. Um, but be careful of solutions that might trick you. For example, choice 3, all right, that's very close to this, but not. Okay? But not. Another way of doing this is actually, if you, if you happen to forget how to do it and you actually need to find a solution, you can take each one of these different choices here and plug it into the equation. I'm plugging the different choices to the equation. For example, if you take choice 2, negative 1, negative 18, and plug it into the first equation, right, it should check out. How fine, you should have two numbers equal to each other. At the same time, negative 1 over negative 18. If you plug into the second equation, you will also get an equality. Therefore, it works for both, and that will be the only solution that works for both.